Okay, good morning, everyone. This is uh, Elder Franklin Broomfield. I uh, used to be a uh, club director of about four or five churches. I'm now the GLAR uh, region Pathfinder coordinator and part, part of the conference um, Pathfinder advisory. We have Sister Rosie with us today, Rosa, uh, who's also yes, part of the I'm advisory. here, yes. And she will be co-hosting. If you have any questions, put them in the chat and uh, we'll have questions and answer afterwards and she'll keep me on track. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. I'm sitting over here, my tie is not right. You get my tie right. Okay. So here we get started. Everybody have their answer sheet? Yes. Okay. I got all my tools here. All right. Let's go for it. So, kites. There are different kinds of kites. Um, as you can see here, there's a box kite, there's a traditional triangle kite, delta kites. There's some with tails and some without tails. At the end of this, we're hoping that you will be able to make uh, different types of kites and uh, be able to go to the kite uh, and fun day that we're gonna have on the first weekend in April. What's that, April 6th, uh, April 3rd? What is that, Rosa? Um, in Oxnard, in um, yes. Ventura. It's and, Ventura Park, yes. I'm sorry? Yes, in Oxnard. Okay, so we will um, be able to use some of your skills and we hope to have over a hundred kites that day. So tell your friends, your family and your uh, parents to come out and join us. So the first thing they're asking us to, on this is, when were kites first made and flown? and name at least three different ways kites have helped in scientific research, how, how each has affected the world we live in. And then you got to tell the Ben Franklin story uh, about his kite. So in uh, one way was in, uh, you guys heard of the Wright brothers, correct? They're the ones who made, um, invented the airplane. Well, they first started with uh, making kites. And in 1749, there was Alexander Wilson who used several kites attached to a train, uh, one above the other, to measure and compare air and uh, temperature at different altitudes. We call that at Alta, um, the uh, weathermen use that today, altimeters and different things like that. They usually see them on top of buildings or top of antennas. Um, that did what he did in 1749. In 1826, George Pollock invented a, a kite drawn carriage and together with two of his friends in similar carriage, they traveled toll free. In those days you have to pay the stagecoach, 113 miles, reaching speeds of over 20 miles, 20 miles an hour. Okay, so those, those are a few ways that you can put on your answer sheet. Um, now the Brent Franklin story, uh, a lot of people uh, think that he discovered electricity. He, he, he didn't discover electricity, but he proved electricity was not a phenomenon or nothing that, that was the wrath of God. It was a, a part of the weather system. And that was done in 1752. And a lot of folks didn't know it was actually his, he and his son um, who were able to prove um, that they were not executed, <laughs> executed. but in uh, October uh, 19, um, uh, that same year, it was explained on what happened. So when the rain was wet, the kite twined so that it could conduct electric fire freely. You will find it streams out plentifully from the key at the approach of your knuckle. And with the key at a, as a ferrule or a jar, maybe, um, it changed the, uh, the electricity and it captured it. So you need conductivity. So the key 
actually captured the uh, the electricity. Okay. Well, I'm gonna jump to I'm gonna jump to number three because number two is is out of order. And explain briefly um, how a kite flies. So um, I'm gonna show this video real quick. Kinds of kites. Kite flying is a fun activity that people of all ages can enjoy. All you have to do is go somewhere windy and you can literally go fly a kite. There are actually several bits of physics play here and interestingly they are pretty much the same physics that helps lift an airplane off of the ground. These are also known as the four forces of flight. Lift, weight, thrust, and drag. The first, of course, is lift. Lift pushes the kite up and is the upward force acting on the kite. Basically, the wind blows on your kite, some of it hits the kite directly. Some go over the kite and some go under it. The wind that goes underneath helps lift the kite off the ground. Sometimes when there is not enough wind to lift a kite, you need to run with it, creating your own bit of wind behind you. Next, weight. Weight defines the force of gravity holding your kite to the ground. Kites are generally lightweight so that the wind can easily overcome gravity and lift the kite into the air. Next, thrust. The pull originating from the person holding the string is called thrust. Thrust is the force that pushes your kite in a forward direction. Thrust is created either by the wind driving the kite forward or by your child pulling the kite forward with the string. Next, drag. The push of the wind against the kite is called drag. Lift is the force that well lifts an object up. Drag is the pressure of the wind against the object that keeps it aloft. The purpose of aerodynamics is to reduce drag, but a kite is designed to offer just enough lift and drag to get it and keep it in the air. To get your kite into the air, the force of the lift must overcome the force of gravity holding the kite down. To keep it in the air, the force of thrust must be equal to the force of drag. Important physics concepts that are easy to demonstrate with your kite. So what are you waiting for? Let's go fly a kite up to the highest heights. I think everybody's ready. Okay, we're going to number three. We're gonna come back to number two, okay? so. Kites need four things to fly, all right? They need, so I want you to write this down. They need four things to fly. I think the answer to the question is, um, explain briefly how kites fly. So kites need four things to fly. They need lift, number one. They need weight, number two. I'll explain that later. And three, they need thrust, and four, they need drag. Rather than go into a whole big scientific reason of how kites fly, I'm gonna show this film again, this video, but at a correct angle, you don't need to run, by the way, to get a flight up, a kite up in the air, okay? If it's a windy enough day, you can just let the kite go and it'll pick it, the wind will pick it up. That's where weight comes in. And you, you really need four things. I'm sorry? What, 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 what are the four things? Yes, can you repeat them? Lift, 
weight, thrust, and drag. Okay, now we're back to number two. Okay, names weight, name ways kites are used today. Number one, we talked about one before, which was predicting weather, carrying meteor meteorological instruments into the air. You see a lot of them on towers. You see them at airports, of course. And in science projects, some of you have seen them at your schools and so forth, but um, they're usually up in the air. So kites today are still used to uh, predict weather. Have you guys heard about the weather balloon? About when they put the weather balloon up in the air? It's a big old, look like a big old beach ball. Well, that's all to help predict the weather. Um, Carrying loads of water. The, uh, the, the uh, kites are strong enough. Uh, I have seen kites. Have you guys heard of parasailing? So if you can understand parasailing is a big kite that, that carries people, understand that you can control the buckets of water by flying your kite. <clears throat> if you buy a kite, if you build a kite that's big enough. Uh, space flight, um, doing the recovery of the space vehicles, they use uh, types of kites to, um, to help determine um, different aspects of, of the atmosphere. As you get higher, the atmosphere gets thinner. Pulling ships, here's something crazy, pulling ships. Uh, if you can get a sail that's big enough and you can pull a ship. Now, that's not something impossible to think about because you've heard of all of this. You've heard about sailboats, right? So sailboats are nothing more than a big sail, a big kite. That, that's why when we're setting up tents, you have to spike down not only your tents, but you have canopies. A lot of folks are using canopy these days. And on a windy day, you have to spike down your, your, your canopy tents because if not, the person who asked if it was, when do you know if your kite is light enough? Well, some of you I'm sure have been to campouts where you have seen the wind pick up a canopy and take it sailing. So if you don't spike your your, your canopy tents, if you look at the end of each one of the four poles, you will see that there's a hole in the ground and that's for you to put a spike in it. Because if you don't spike your uh, canopy tents, the wind will get under it, that'll create lift and it's weight, it's light enough. And the thrust is from the wind picking it up and the drag, that's the part that, that's pulling against the gravity and it'll, it'll make your canopy tent fly. Another thing is recreation. So there's kite surfing, and I should have showed you a video on kite surfing and skateboarding, but you can look on, on YouTube and find it. So people use kites today to do parasailing. They use um, buggies um, where they can actually use, use buggies uh, like go-karts and um, use that kite also to give them propulsion. All right. So what you need to know is name ways kites are, um, are used today. Predicting weather, number one. Carrying loads of water, number two. Uh, space flight. Pulling ships and recreation. All right, I'm gonna show you some examples. Here is a luxury boat.
So you turn the engine off. is going to be. one this is a lot bigger ship this is a container ship now watch this it is estimated that five percent of global co2 emissions is due to shipping so the reintroduction of wind power to international cargo ships is a move that could help reduce the high levels of atmospheric carbon but the german ship mv beluga sky sails is more than just a sailing ship. It uses a kite to take advantage of high level winds that blow more constantly than air currents near the surface. Though it will not be completely reliant on its kite, the system will reduce fuel use by about 20%. Beluga Shipping is the first cargo company to use the system developed by Hamburg-based Skysails. When not in use, the kite is stored below deck at the front of the ship. The small amount of storage space needed for the kite only minimally reduces the space available for cargo. The system is controlled from the bridge, with all aspects of the kite's behaviour controlled by computer. The system can be retrofitted to existing ships, and the Sky Sales Company aims to convert 400 ships by 2013. After the ship's maiden voyage, travelling just under 12,000 nautical miles, the system performed as expected, and there are now... Oops, sorry. The system is controlled from the bridge, with all aspects of the kite's behaviour controlled by computer. The system can be retrofitted to existing ships, and the Sky Sales Company aims to convert 400 ships by 2013. After the ship's maiden voyage, travelling just under 12,000 nautical miles, the system performed as expected, and there are now plans to introduce a larger kite to further increase savings to 30%. Beluga expects that the Sky Sail will pay for itself in three to four years. The tether connecting the kite to the ship stretches as far as 500 metres to stay clear of surface turbulence. The Skysail company is continuing to trial the system on larger ships. Right, and this was done, that video was done in 2013, and they're up to now. Less pollution. Thank you. That's the one I wanted to hear also. So if you have less fuel, that means you have less carbon um, going into the air, protecting our ozone. And those are the two immediate uh, benefits of using wind power. And that is you're, you're lowering your carbon footprint. We'll talk about that later in, in, in another uh, honor, but it's more ecologically pleasing to the planet by using wind power um, rather than fuel to, to, to create energy. 
So two immediate things that you will see for using kites to power those ships is that um, they won't be using any fuel. Now, when there's no wind, that's when they turn their engines on. But um, also no pollution. The thing about that is in the sea, why that works better out in the sea, because there is more uh, lift, there's more wind in the middle of the ocean than in the land. Now the ship is right on the, uh, on the ocean. And so that's right near to ground level zero. Why is wind more prevalent in the ocean than it is on land? Well, when you're on land, there's much more obstructions. So the wind doesn't fly, it doesn't flow, excuse me, as freely. In the ocean, there's nothing to stop it on the ground, on the ground, the giving the ground force, because it's wide open and the, and the wind is just going with nothing to stop it, no mountain, no trees, no houses, no, no, no buildings to obstruct it, okay? Are we ready to move on to question number four? So defining the following terms. The first one is the spine. The spine, um, let me see. I'll, I'll show that to you later in, in another picture. But the spine is the center rod that runs the, the, the lengthwise of the kite. Now, when I'm talking to you about these parts of, of these terms for this kite, we're talking about a traditional kite, like what you saw Ben Franklin use, it's called a triangle or a diamond kite. That's the kind of kite we're talking about. There are other kites that I'm gonna show you later on in the, in the presentation, but what we're talking about here, the easiest thing I can tell you about is doing these terms based on a traditional diamond kite, okay? And everybody has seen a kite like what Ben Franklin flew. It, it looked like a, um, a delta or uh, it had four sides. Um, and it, it's also sometimes called a diamond kite. So the spine is that it's a longer rod that goes down the middle of the kite. Some kites will have more than one. The center rod it, um, it, it, it's a proportion, I think it's two to three. So if you have a, a kite that is 60 inches long, you need to have the um, spars um, to be, uh, what, 60 needs to be 30, okay? So the spar, Okay, you see that on your answer sheet, spars? That's the stick used as the frame of the kite. That's what you need to write down. The spar is the frame of the kite. The vent, the vent redirects the airflow over the sail and may help to create lift or stabilize the direction of the kite. You're gonna see that when you use the diamond kite, when you make the, when you tie the strings, you're gonna want to, you're gonna create like a bow, a bowing of the spars, and that creates wind to go through. If you saw on the ship, when, when we just looked at the ship video, you saw um, how they, they had a, a hollow, um, like, a, like a tunnel, okay? That's what creates the vent. So bowstring, the bowstring is tied from each end of the spar making the spar bow shape and gives the kite its bilateral uh, angle between the spars, supporting Sephora's uh, as a wing and a horizontal transverse line. Now that's a whole lot of words. The last person said, say it in your own words. I'm gonna say that in your own words. So the spar is the crossbar that goes across the kite, okay? But a kite is never flat. You have to have a little bow in it. That's what creates the vent. They should have explained bowstring first before they said, ask you for a vent. So the bowstring, you're gonna tie it so that it creates a bow. So a bowing effect. So you're gonna, you're gonna bend the kite and you're gonna tie it. So that's what the bowstring does. 
it takes you tie to each end of the spar. What and what is the spar? The spar is the crossbar of that diamond kite, and that's that's what creates the vent. So the bowstring ties to two ends of the spar, and it's and it literally creates a bow. You have to bend it in, not a lot, just enough to create a little vent. Okay, you don't want to break it. You just you're just gonna barely tie it together so it creates a bowing effect. I'm gonna use this. <laughs> this is a small kite. So this uh, diagram right here, it shows you his fingers are on the spar. That longer rod is the spine, okay? So by bending it in and tying a string on either end, as the gentleman said, uh, it it, uh, it 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 will create the vent. Okay, does that better explain uh, the use of the bowstring? Um, okay, now we're going to be ready for the cover. The cover for the sail, the cloth, the plastic paper is fitted across the kite surface that allows the wind to catch the air currents. So. This kite that this person is actually making, if you can really look real good, it's actually a grocery bag. Okay. And they cut it out to make a kite. So the cover is literally, your answer to that, what the cover is, it's the material that covers the kite structure. Moving on to the frame. The frame makes the shape of the kite. At the beginning, when you show, when I showed you that the um, the different types of kite, and I'll go back to that uh, later on. This will make more sense. There are different material that covers the frame. The frame, so the frame is what the cover goes over. The material that we just talked about in the cover. The frame is what holds the cover, okay? Now the tail, the tail of the kite is a length of material that is used, that is attached to the kite <clears throat> to create drag. So if you don't have drag, we talked about this before, it, it's hard to control the direction of the kite sometimes. You do have some kites that don't have tails, but a tail literally creates drag because, I mean, um, it literally like drag on the kite because if you have a kite that's just flying straight up, you need some resistance. We'll get into to, to the science of, of aerodynamics when you get into high school or college. <laughs> but just understand the tail is the length of material, and it can be made out of cotton, nylon, plastic, which is attached to the kite. Some people use it just for visual effect or to cause drag. So the tail is the length of material that is attached to the end of the kite for, um, that creates drag or it adds beauty to the kite. Everybody's good on the tail. So now we're going to get to the keel, K-E-E-L. The keel is the triangular piece of material used in lieu as well as a bridle. It helps with directional stability, just like the keel of a, of a, of a boat. Now, this keel is not on this kite, but there are some kites that have another material. Some of you have seen them. You can buy them in the, uh, in the I think Target and Walmart has them. These are the little little kites that kids usually get that are already pre-made. But they'll have on the center spine. I'm pointing at this like you can see it. Um, let me use my pointer here. But along this side right here, there's a piece of material that sticks out, like the keel of a boat or a blade. Okay. And if that's what it is, it's the keel. It helps with stability of the kite. Everybody good with keel? So 
I'm bringing this up here just for a brief second to show you. There are, these are real serious kite reels, okay? Um, this one right here is a professional kite reel. And can you guys still see this? Can you guys yes. see this? Yes, we can. This thing can hold hundreds of feet of, of, of kite uh, string, okay? And this is, this is some serious, you're, you're into some serious work when you're doing this. Um, so I'll explain this to you later, but I wanted you to see this, this reel. We won't, it won't be a requirement, but this is something that you should be aware of that's out there. Um, and you'll see why later, because if you want to kite, one of the contests that we're going to have in, in Oxnard on uh, the first Sunday in April is the one who has the highest kite. Well, you're going to have to have a whole lot of string to be able to, to, uh, to fly a kite very high. And when you have it this that much string, you're going to need a pretty big uh, reservoir. This thing is about 12 inches in diameter, okay? And you can see right here, this is from Europe, this is 400 meters of line that it can hold. Some smaller ones are like these smaller ones right here or these little ones right here. Um, but uh, they're different. I'll, I'll just show you this real quick. So this is- I often get asked what reels I use with my kites. And the answer is always the same from the biggest kite that I have, the mega fish, right down to the smallest. I use hoops fools like this. They're ideal as far as I'm concerned. They're safe, they don't break, they're easy to handle and easy to control. If you're letting a kite out as here, you can slow it or speed it up just by the pressure of your hand on the reel. And when you finish flying, they're equally easy to wind up. You just hold the reel with one hand, wind the line on with the other and Turn the reel over from time to time, maybe every seven or eight turns. So the reason I showed you that, the flying line, it's a, it's a tether, what a person holds onto to control the, the kite. This is the link between the kite and your hand, basically. Okay, that's the flying line. So the flying line is basically flight, uh, the, the string. The spool is that red thing you saw him have, and that's, we're going to show you something different here for the pipe on honor. You're actually going to be using, you're going to make your, your own string uh, hoop. Okay. All right, moving on. So the bridle, those of you who have been around horses before, the bridle is, a, is, the, is, is what goes between the, the horse's uh, mouth that you control the direction of the horse. Well, just like that, you control the direction of your kite. The, the bridle is the line that forms the junction between the kite and the flying line. The bridle transmits the commands of the pilot to the kite. The bridle may also be means of giving shape to the kite in the case of soft kites. So let me see if I have this one here. So if you notice in this kite, it has a bridle. That's, I don't know if you can see this material right here. I mean a bridle, it has a keel. This is what the keel is, all right? I'm gonna show you this. This is a little out of turn, but I think it'll help you explain these different parts of the kite if I show you this.
That's the bridle. I mean, that's the keel. That's the keel. What they didn't show you here on the bigger kites, watch my arrow. From here to here, on the other side, you will put a string. And most people use the bow string. And they tie a string across that. And that is considered the bridle. OK? That's what uh, you control the direction of your kite with. OK? So that what you need to know is that the, the bridle is the line that forms the junction between the kite and the flying line. So this is the flying line, and this is a different type kite. I'll show you another video, but um, let me see here. So it's, it's the string that goes across. Some people use the bow string as the, uh, as the bridle. Okay, any questions? Okay, the reel. I showed you the reel earlier. The reel is what contains the string, the flying string. It is used to keep your string, okay? So they talk about a reel, but it's actually um, what we're gonna be doing. It's, it's gonna be considered a reel but it's going to be uh, um, the string on a stick or a string on a pool. That's what a reel is. Now the dihedral is the angle formed by the lateral extremities of the kite to the horizontal and the stabilizes the line of flight. Ultimately, a bend or a curve in the kite that help keep the kite stable. So the hydro, all you need to know is it's a part of the kite that keeps it stable. And it's part of the lateral movement right here. Um, the, 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 it's part of the bowstring. You can also use, some people use that as a dihedral. But it's what controls the kite from left to right. Okay, number five. What is the common cause of kite failure? Some of the things that we talked about you can figure out. But here are five reasons why, number five is five reasons. <laughs> why kites usually fail. The number one reason is lack of wind. That's quite obvious, right? If there's no wind, you're not gonna fly, okay? The second one is the opposite. Too much wind or too strong a wind. If the wind gets too big, it'll take your kite and, and, and there's nothing you can do to control it. And I'll give you a good example. Do you think you can, con you need wind to, to control your kite, but do you think you can control it in a hurricane or in a tornado? That's too much wind, okay? The other thing is trees or obstacle causing turbulence. So turbulence is what is, um, those of you who ever flew on a plane, is what, when, the, when the, uh, the plane shakes, that's called turbulence. Well, turbulence is caused when wind uh, doesn't flow straight. And if the wind is blowing through trees, um, it will, next time I do this, I'll, I'll get a video on crosswind. I, I can better explain it. But crosswinds, if you ever landed on an airplane um, and sometimes it goes sideways as it's landing, that's because that's called a, a, a form of turbulence. The wind is pushing the plane sideways. So if the wind is going across a, a big tree, well, the turbulence uh, that it causes 
if your kite is around by that tree where the wind is pushing through it, it messes up the wind is the best way I can say it. And your wind and your kite will, um, will not be in control. You will not be able to control your kite because of the turbulence. Basically, it's a, a bad tornado. <laughs> essential, another reason is the essential parts of the kite or, or, or the line breaks. So if you're, what usually happens when you have too much wind on a kite, depending on your kite and how big the, the wind is, it can actually break the string on your kite. Okay. Um, or it'll break different parts of your kite. I've seen many kites um, are damaged by the wind and the, one, the wood actually snaps. Um, the wind stops and the kite falls. That goes back to number one, lack of wind. So the five reasons why your kite will fail, lack of wind, not enough wind, too much wind, trees are obstacle, causing turbulence. Trees don't, trees are not a problem. Trees only become a problem when the wind creates turbulence, okay? So it's trees or obstacle that causes turbulence. And then the essential parts of your kite break. The string, the spar, the spine, your kite will, will, will not work. And then of course, the obvious, if the, queen, if the wind stops, you have no more, no more flying. Number six, what should be done when a kite loops doing, a, doing, doing flight? So now we talked about um, what causes uh, a kite to fail. The usual cause of a kite looping is not enough the dihedral. And that is, you did not create enough of a delta or enough of a bowing effect for the wind to create, uh, the wind to flow through the vent, okay? You have a, a, a bridle that is built badly. The bridle is that area we talked about um, that pulls the two spars together to create the vent. Poorly balanced. So you need to have the proper balance between the spar and the, the, sp the spine. It's usually a two to three ratio. So if your spine is three, what, uh, three feet, your spar should be two feet, okay? Poorly balanced. And of course, we talked about this, what causes a, white, uh, a kite to loop would also be too much wind. And literally, it'll just go round and round in circles. And usually, as it's going round and round in circles, it's usually going to fall to the ground. Number seven, why is a tail sometimes needed on a kite? OK, I'm going to say it to you, and then I'm going to bring it down to you um, in my own words. So I told you before, the, tight, the kite's tail can be used also for stability, for drag, and it's also for decoration. But a kite's tail is, is, is used for stability to the kite to keep it facing into the wind. It, it, we talked about it before, it helps with the direction. Well, if the, the tail will always be at the end of the, of the kite. You'll never see the kite, the tail leading the kite. The kite will always be at the, kite will always be at the end. And one of the reasons, the tail will always be at the end. And the reason being is it creates the drag and puts the kite in the correct orientation, all right? The length of the tail should be about six to nine times the length of the kite body. Some put them on the kite so that the air will, will wave along the wind for decorations. So the purpose of the tail is for stability and it creates enough of the dihydro as part of the dynamics of creating that triangle, that wind effect, that, that tunnel, that vent, okay? Everybody knows what a tail is used for now, right? Know at least three safety rules for kite flying. 
I took that slide out, but I'll read it to you. Okay, there's, I'm gonna give you about six of them, then you pick the one that, re, that, that you relate to the most, okay? You never want to fly a kite when it's raining and lightning. Lightning can kill and cause serious burns. So you ask then why did Ben Franklin not get burned was that the, um, the key actually um, took the charge of the, uh, the electricity. So you never want to fly, you shouldn't be out in the rain anytime um, in lightning. When, um, when lightning um, comes out, you're supposed to go inside, okay? Do not fly a kite near roads or cars, okay? Because if your kite is pretty enough, you could be distracting a driver, believe it or not. And what happens? Then you'll have an accident. Do not fly near power lines. You could be killed by the electric shock, okay? And you can also, some people have metallic kites or metallic uh, graduation times and birthdays. You see people with balloons, uh, metallic balloons. I suggest never to take get a metallic balloon. I mean, you can keep it inside, but if those metallic balloons or metallic kite get caught up in the power lines, they'll cause a transformer to explode. Do not fly near people or animals. The spine is, is traveling at sometimes 90 miles an hour. If that, if when you're flying a kite, it's gonna be very powerful. You're gonna feel the, 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 um, the pull on it, the drag. And sometimes it can get up to anywhere from 30 to 100 miles an hour. So you don't want that to be around people because if it comes down, it's gonna come down like an arrow. Of course, keeping away from buildings and trees. <laughs> the, uh, trees, if you're near a tree, say goodbye. Your, your, your kite is gone. <laughs> the tree ate it up. Do not fly within two miles of an active airport or aerodrome, okay? Why do you wanna not fly your kite near an airport? Anybody got an answer for that? Oh, uh, uh, well, maybe because there's a plane coming by. Like... But what happens if a kite gets near a plane? What might happen? The wind might blow it with you. Well, the wind will blow it, but for safety's sake, what is a what what is the bad thing that can happen with a kite in an airplane? The kite can get into the engine or something. Ah, if it gets into the the flight is not the the kite is not going to cause any turbulence. But if that kite gets into the engine, it's going to chew it up and it might stop the engine. Have you guys ever heard of birds being sucked into an airplane before? No. Well, a lot of times the, um, that's why they have noise devices and different things to keep birds away from airports because birds getting into an airplane engine can actually make the engine um, fail. And then you only have one engine. And if you only had one engine, you're in trouble. Okay, so there are six reasons. You only need to put down three. On, on safety rules for flying kite. Never fly a kite when it's raining or lightning. Do not fly a kite near roads or cars. That's why we're going to the beach first week in April. Do not fly near power poles, electric lines. Do not fly near people or animals. Keep away from buildings and trees. And of course, don't fly anywhere two miles near an airport. All right, now we're gonna get into some, some work. Um, number nine, we're gonna do the following. We're gonna correctly wind line on a string. So did everybody bring something to wind um, string on? Do me a favor, over there, just once, I gotta go to the restroom. Can a straw work? Yeah, you can, a straw can work. Some of you, I told you to bring, you can bring pencils. 
Where? Okay. Fireplace. Okay. So I have some some string here. I got this from where did I get this? I got this from um what's the name of this place? Harbor Freight. Um Harbor Freight too. Yeah. Okay. Keep, Harbor Freight. That. Yeah, and I think I only paid like two, three bucks for it. This is 200 feet. Oh, this is 200 feet. And this is very light uh, fiber string. Okay. And if you have, this is just for demonstration purposes, but you can use a pencil. Um, you can use uh, anything round. Um, I went and got this from Home Depot. This is a, a very small pipe. Okay. Very small pipe. Or you can get a wooden round stick, okay? Anything like that. And what you want to do is take your, your string or thread, and what you want to do is to tie a knot, any kind of knot. Those of you who went to knot tying, you can go and do a four-handed knot. Oops. What you want to do is make sure that you tie at least two knots into here because what's gonna happen if you let all your line out for your kite, right? You don't, you don't wanna lose your kite. So you wanna make sure you tie two knots at the end, all right? If you wanna trim it up, you can. Um, you know, if you wanna be neat, cut it off. But what you're gonna do here is you're gonna be making a figure eight. So the best way I tell you to do this is to just simply tie this round and round for a little bit, okay? Mm -hmm. After you got about that much on, now you're gonna to start to make a figure eight. You're gonna go this way, and then you're gonna come back this way, all right? And just, you're gonna make figure eights. So you're gonna go round this way, and then you're gonna come back and go this way, all right? You're gonna keep doing this round and round until you get to something that looks like this, all right? <laughs> this is about a half a reel. And you can see that you're gonna roll it this way, and then you're gonna make a figure eight and roll it back this way. That's a figure eight, okay? rolling it back and forth till you create this, all right? So it's gonna be, it's gonna, you're gonna need some strong. So you can practice with making this reel with, with, not, um, with yarn or with thread. It's just to get, it's just to get the practice to getting into making this into a figure eight, okay? You want it to look like that, okay? So, so when you're letting the line out, you're, you're, you're letting the, the kite out, it's gonna let go like this, you see? You can just hold one end of it, and then when you wanna stop your kite, you just hold on to this. But to wrap it, you need to create a figure eight. Come back around, go over the top, okay? And come back around, Go back over, see what I'm doing here? You're just making a figure eight. Go back around top. Okay, everybody see how to do a figure eight? All right. Um, so the other part is that we're gonna be doing today is broken ends, um, how to tie when, you, when your string breaks. How do you tie, um, how do you make it, um, how do you tie two broken ends? So if you're out in the field and your, your kite string breaks, you gotta come up real quick and, and fix it. So this is called, I'm doing this in two colors so you can see the two different, the two different, um, two different ways to do that. I mean, um, I'm sorry, you've seen two strings. So, um, I tied mine here, and when you do it correctly, it's going to look like this. This is a fisherman's knot, and when you 
and uh, when you tie it together, you come together, look at that, and it becomes stronger by pulling it together. So I'm gonna show you an easy way to, to learn to do this. And that is, we're gonna share, I'm gonna share screen again. And I'm gonna show you a video, okay? All right, here we go. Now, this is a dragon kite. Check this out. This is cool. Like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> This one is made out of decoration paper. And this one shows exactly the, the diagram, the tail, the whole bit. Check this out real quick. We're not gonna watch all 14 minutes of this. But I just wanna let you see the concept. known as a diamond kite. This is the simplest kite to make.
This is the covering. They're taping the spine. It on the back end of the top because the wind is going to really tear it. Really take those corners. Now watch this. Using tape to reinforce it because he's about to take a needle through it.
basically going to make a tail here. will need to go and make your own kites now. So this right here is a box kite, okay? And um, these are different shaped kites, but this is your traditional diamond kite. Now for number 10, I'm gonna stop sharing here. I'm gonna show you a couple of different examples of kites. So this is the sled kite. So this is what is called a sled kite, okay? You can go online and get the instructions on how to do this. This one right here, this is the one uh, that, 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 that uses two lines, okay? And then the other kite that um, you might wanna make is a flat kite. Okay. It's, it's, it's literally flight, but this one's a little trickier. So this line right here is the bow line that creates the vent, right? And when you make your kite, it's actually, you know, when you're looking up at it, if you're looking at it, like when that decoration was kite we saw, you're actually looking at the other side of it, the, the decorative side. So if you see, this one has a few lines that you have to be able to make. And if you don't do these, these lengths correctly, it's gonna be a difficult flight kite to fly. It's a simple kite, but it can be difficult to fly. So that was another one, the sled kite, the flat kite. The other one is this two stick diamond kite. We've already went over that one, all right? And now this is the Delta wing. This is pretty cool, Delta. Those of you in science and physics, you know that, that that's, it's a, it's like a triangle. Now, this one is going to be uh, interesting in that. And these are the kinds that you see you, that you usually buy in the store. Um, but it's cool to make it yourself. So I don't know if you guys could see, but this is the keel on a Delta one. This is a keel. So this is a... Uh, um, a eddy kite or a, a Marley kite. Those are pretty cool. Um, but let me show you this one that some people find challenging, but this is pretty cool to make, folks. A box kite. This is what your traditional box kite looks like. This thing can actually fly. And you actually are pulling it from the, uh, the, the, the side of the kite. Okay, you can see the inside. Check this one out, rainbow kite. This one costs a lot of money. <laughs> That's that dragon kite that you were seeing. But these things are huge. And as you see, when they were pulling the dragon kite, it takes a lot of people to hold those things down because once they catch wind, they can pull, create a lot of force, a lot of force. So these are different types of box kites. I would love to see somebody come and make a box kite. That'd be pretty cool. 
There's also a tetra uh, kite. Um, let me see if I can find one of those. This is a series of triangles. Tetra, short for tetradon kite. You can actually make this yourself. It'd be great. Maybe the whole club can make one of these or whatever, but you'll probably have to assemble it. Um, so take the name of this down if you want to. It's the Tetradedal Tetradedro Kite. Tetra for short. <laughs> okay. And this thing is it can get really huge. Um, but it's a series of triangles. This is a complex one. Okay. But these are the kites you can go search online and see and surprise us on the first week in uh first Sunday in April. It'll be the first time we'll be able to do an outdoor event in a long time. We're, we're gonna have a fun day. We're gonna have uh, um, volleyball and um, you know, uh, flight kind, football. So to complete the honor, you have to fly the kite, so but you have to show your counselor the actual, and it's not a picture. You have to actually show them your um, your 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 figure eight, your 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 string winding on a stick. So it doesn't have to be a stick. It could be a pipe, but you should have at least ten feet of cable. The honor doesn't say so, but to effectively do it. Um, you need about a, a, a size of about a foot, uh, a stick or a pipe. And as, uh, as I showed you guys, I showed you guys my, um, my, uh, my kite. Everybody see this? This is in my hand. And you need, when you find your kite that day, you should get at least a hundred feet of, of string because you're gonna need that much. With you or show to your counselor that you have you have um you have flown both kites kite. but to okay. finish this honor you have to show you have to you have to show the actual spool of string and you actually have to show two kites and fly the two kites 